Hey, what's up everyone? Look, I'm talking to you from outside. It feels like ages since I've actually been able to get outside and do some gardening. The sky is blue and it's actually quite warm here in Dorset. Now, I'm gonna try and do a few more of these vlog type videos to keep you updated with all of the little jobs that are happening in my tiny tropical style garden and my nursery. And if you've been a subscriber for a long time, you'll have seen some of my old videos and that's exactly how I used to do things to share the creation of this outside space and all of the evolution along the way. So what jobs have I got planned for today? Well, just behind me here, you'll see some Arundo Donax. Arundo Donax is a giant weed that I like to use as a substitute for bamboo because it's much better behaved and it's insanely fast growing. Um, so it's really good for impatient gardeners like me. So the first job that I need to do in propagating this is clean some of those glass jars that I use for rooting water that you might have seen in my last how-to video. Now the only problem is you can see my crocs in this shot so you know the style that I usually crop out of the camera's view. Nothing wrong with crocs, they're great for gardening. Please don't judge me. So I'm just using an antibacterial spray and a little bit of water with a scouring pad because I use these jars over and over again. These are old pickle jars and they're perfect, really, really good size for propagating plants from stem cuttings. Now I'm just going to place those in the greenhouse and it's lovely and warm in here. You can see plants like this mountain papaya, which is Vasconella pubescens. It's just pushing out leaves so early in the year. This greenhouse drops down to about four degrees at night because I can't pay the price of electricity bills at the moment. So I'm only just keeping the frosts off, but for the majority of the half hardy plants that I'm trying to overwinter this year, it's been perfect. And I'm surprised actually just how well the papaya has adapted, but it's taller than me now. It keeps growing over winter and it's brushing the top of the greenhouse. So this year it's going outside. I might plant it in the ground just to let it do its thing for one last year. Hopefully I'll get some papaya fruits and maybe some seeds, but that's not what I'm doing today. I just thought it's quite cool to show you that. I'm gonna start chopping up the Arundo Donax now. Now the great thing with Arundo Donax is it can be propagated from canes. So I've been and raided a friend's garden today. Thank you, Dave. And I'm gonna have a go at propagating these. Now I did try some of my own in autumn, but it was a complete flop. None of them rooted and they all just turned to mush. And although we've had really, really cold temperatures, these were up against a stone wall and that microclimate has kept some of the green in the stems. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that it works. You don't know unless you try. So with Arundo Donax, they have nodes, just like any other plant, and you can fill them a bit like a swollen point, like in a bamboo cane. So I'm just going to chop until I have one or two nodes per section, and I'm going to lay them flat on the floor so I know which way is the top, because if I put them in the water upside down, they just will not root and they'll turn to mush, which might well be what I did in autumn hindsight hey so the bit closest to me is the bottom you'll notice that the end of the canes or stems are sitting in this water bowl and that's just because I went for a walk with the dog between cutting them down and doing this job so it's just to keep them hydrated I've just noticed that actually where I'm doing this job there is a very similar plant this is my sugar cane and I left it out all winter um, just as an experiment because I've got a few more in the greenhouse that I'm going to propagate in the same way and I chopped it back because it was looking really messy. The stems haven't turned to mush and this garden had minus 5.2 degrees Celsius so perhaps there's a chance it will reshoot from the base or maybe from the side of the stems. Time will tell. Right that's enough. Time to go and stick them in our glass jars. I'm making effort to remember which way is up so I don't make the same mistake I probably made in autumn. Oh, look at that. 
almost the perfect amount per jar. Now, just a splash of water. Now I'm just going to change the water in these jars every two or three days to stop it becoming stagnant. Just like I said in my video explaining how to do this earlier in the week, which I will put a link to below. And it's job done. I'm going to sit these on top of a heat mat because heat will just help these jars root and then, well, hopefully root. I find with um, these stem type plants, the Arundodonax and the sugarcane, that they tend to produce shoots before they produce roots, but if you're patient, they should do it. Keep watching, subscribe, and you'll find out. Now on closer inspection, the uh, unheated propagator that I've got sat on top of the heat mat is completely chocker with seeds at this time of year. So it's gonna go into the veto pod instead, and the heat in there should help bring on roots. Let me show you what else I've got growing in the veto pod at the moment. So I'll just sit that in there. Uh, we've got some Justicia carnea, which is the Brazilian plume flower. These are really nice. These younger plants don't have much color on the underside, a little bit, but it's the flowers that are the best. They look like stacks of shrimps. Sometimes they're called the shrimp plant. And back here is Colocasia pink china. Now these are a few small ones I've got. I've got some absolutely enormous ones that I'm gonna split and divide. So they should be available in the next few weeks because the weather is really starting to warm up. And yeah, a begonia luxuriance. I'm gonna keep this one for myself because it's not quite big enough to sell, but if I nurse it on, then I can enjoy this really jungly foliage in my own tropical style garden this year. Now, something else that I mentioned in my how-to video was that some people like to mix rooting powder or rooting hormone in with the water when they're propagating plants this way. I don't do it. Um, it might well work, but I, it's something that I've absolutely never done. I like to keep the water as clean as possible. Like I say, I'll refresh it every three to four days, um, but at the very, very minimum, once a week. And that's good enough to keep the water clean and to keep the environment healthy and just to encourage roots, healthy roots to grow. Um, like I say, I didn't have success in autumn, so hopefully these will work. This is the thing with gardening. You might think that you know how to do something. You might have done it successfully so many times before, but it doesn't always pan out that way. And it's normally when you're showing someone how to do it or that you can do it. So if these don't work, it's your fault because I'm sharing it with you, not mine. I'm actually really pleased with how well propagation has gone in this eight by six greenhouse this year, considering that I haven't been heating it to the temperatures I did last year. I think last year it was nine or 10 degrees I kept it in here. So everything was growing away really, really happily. But considering it's been around that four or five degree mark on the really, really cold nights, things like these aeoniums. So this is one that I can never say the name of, Schwarzkopf which is one of the darkest leaved aeoniums that you can get. They've rooted really, really well. And again, I've done videos on how to propagate aeoniums. So go check those out if it's something that you might be interested in. Something that's a bit special is this. Now I call it Isoplexus canariensis. The common name is the Canary Island Foxglove. I grew these from seed and it's a really nice evergreen shrub if you have mild winters. But I think now the name has changed to Digitalis. So it's in the same family as the native foxglove here in the UK. But this is well worth growing because it has this fiery orange spikes and it repeat flowers, unlike the native foxglove. Now it's not just inside of the greenhouse where plants are starting to thrive with all this extra sunlight and all this extra warmth, actually, outside of the greenhouse is starting to look quite good as well, with some sure signs that spring is on the way. I don't know if you can see here, the roses are producing shoots, and down here, we've got buds on some of the more woody plants. So this is Sambucus nigra, which is a really nice dark leaved plant that is just an easy to grow, hardy foliage plant that looks really exotic and contrasts beautifully against green foliage in the garden. 
So it's time for me to head out again now. I need to post some of the Seed Club subscriptions and some of the seed orders which go out with the Royal Mail. Actually, this morning was packing day as well, so I was up early getting those orders done. I like to squeeze as much as possible into a day. Thanks for following along. I think next job on the list is probably possing on some of the Brugmansia, that's the angel trumpets that I've rooted over winter in the glass jars, just like I'm doing this Arundo Donax, the giant reed. And Brugmansia is great because you can keep it in the jar all winter long. Um, so long as you keep changing the water, it's happy. So I will see you in the next video when I'm probably doing that. Now.